Notre Dame 32 and Toledo 29, and nobody on the planet really got to watch this game. And what a disaster that was for NBC. What a disaster that was for, for Toledo, for nobody to be able to see the damn game. That was frustrating uh, on, a, on a wide level. That, did, you, did you ever actually turn it over to this game? I know you said that you weren't going uh, to. Uh, and you are a man of principle, so I, I kind of expect you I am not a man to. of principle. No, 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 no. Listen, I am not opposed to the streaming stuff if you're the only game on. Amazon gets a Yahoo in the past have gotten NFL games. They get these London games every now and then. And guess what? Or they get a Thursday night game. And they put the London game on at 9 a.m. or 7 a.m. or some weird-ass time. If you're the only game on at a certain time, I don't have a problem with the streaming. Yeah, just You cannot it. ask me to stream balls deep in the middle of 25 other games i'm never going to do it i'm your game will be not one that i watch at all because there is too much other stuff going on at the same time and you can't flip channels back and forth i made a joke a little bit of a joke i made a comment that i thought was clever you ever think something's really clever and no it just seems to go over everybody's head or nobody seems to pick up on it I woke yes. up this morning. It was butt crack early. Okay. It was like 4 30 in the morning. I'm old. Okay. It was like my fifth cup of coffee. All right. I I woke up early and I thought that I just got to thinking I did, last night was crazy. Okay. College football was nuts last night. Yes. Yes, it was. The one thing that really pissed me off was I thought this was pretty clever, Gary. Notre Dame played a game that was not televised since the invention of television. Because Notre Dame has been playing football longer than TV was around. And ever since television was around, somebody has been putting a camera on Notre Dame and putting it on TV. And I thought that was good. And then everybody immediately goes into the whole, you're you're just cheap. And these people are yeah, well, they said even about the money. Yeah, I told you they were like, they were like, you know, what are you going to do when the Super Bowl goes on streaming? I'm going to watch it. I'm going to go yeah. watch it. You know why? Because it's the only game on that day, you dumbass. <laughs> it's a standard, standard situation. Uh, Ghost Dog, by the way, jumps in. 2021 year of the Smash Mouth defense. Yes, indeed. It looks that way. And he said ESPN screwed up their streaming bad yesterday. Ghost Dog, you got to fill me in on what happened with ESPN streaming because I have The no only idea. game I tried to stream and I really, and, and, and I was not getting it very good. I just work under the assumption that this was played at a really like small high school field was the Presbyterian game. I was trying to watch my boy, Ren Hefley. I um, it on the, I and let me tell you, yeah. there were tens of people at that game. There are more people <laughs> watching this live than we're watching that live. And they couldn't get that stream to work. Now that, that tends to make sense. That tends to make sense. So it was bad, man. So yes, Notre Dame, the post game win expectancy here, 98%. They went down 29 to 24 with what a minute 30 left yep. and two pass interference calls late in that game they drove right down the field stuck it in the end zone get a two-point conversion they they did what they were supposed to do the i have a friend that's a notre dame fan that went to the game and he was texting me the whole time he was like this is an incredible like it was a fun you're a notre game. dame fan you're pissed off that it's a good game because it shouldn't be a good game against Toledo. but you're really excited you're getting to watch a good game where your team won. Yes, so, yes. No, a this give was, and take there. This was interesting because Toledo, like we, so of course my theory early on with Hawaii, now maybe Hawaii just sucks. Maybe that's the situation with that. But okay. my theory was maybe these G5 teams haven't seen big time power football in two years and that could end up being an issue, right? I don't think that's an issue. I think the thing is, these G5 teams have a ton of returning production. I told you Toledo, number two in returning production in all of FBS. They have got a ton of experienced guys back. They've got talent. They got like four or five NFL guys. They are going to have guys drafted this year, like really good players on, on the defensive side and the offensive side. I think Jason Candle's a pretty good head coach. I Toledo had a real shot to win this game. And I mean, Notre Dame, I, I don't know what to make of them after. After the Florida State situation last week where they're up by 18 and, and they almost give up the ghost at the end, and now this with Toledo, like I think Toledo's a good, fun football team, right? But I don't think that they are like a top 25 team. So now I'm trying to figure out what in the hell is Notre Dame, and I have no idea. I, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that either. I don't know. I'm just going to watch every week and – We've got two weeks of, of film here. Kansas State beats the hell out of Stanford. 
Stanford then goes on the road and beats the hell out of USC while Kansas State goes home and almost gets beat by an FCS school. Yes. So, like, what do we do? Like, this is all just one big weird ass circle jerk that doesn't make any sense. No, no, none of it makes sense. And and trying to This is the dumbest sport in the world, by the way. We we cover and love the dumbest sport I've ever seen. I don't I no one can make sense of this. I, I will tell you this. It's what makes us love this sport. Oh my god. <laughs> it's so weird. It's so fun. To Tyler Buckner for Notre Dame came in three out of three passing, seventy eight yards, one touchdown, ran the ball seven times for sixty eight yards. He is the future of Notre Dame football, but it is still Jack Cohn's team. 21 out of 33, 239 yards, two touchdowns, one pick. Uh, Kyron Williams, 16 carries at 78 yards. Look, Notre Dame only averaged 3.4 yards per carry in this game. Um, so I don't know I don't know what happened here. You're talking like second quarter-ish maybe? I got a text and said Jack Cohn gets pulled. And Jack Cohn got pulled for one series. Very next series he comes in, that's where he throws a touchdown. I don't know why he got pulled. I don't know if it was an injury. I don't know if it was a weird equipment. It wasn't a play. It was a series. He missed the entire series. I do know at the end of the game, before he throws, goes on the drive, he had like a dislocated finger in his throwing hand, and you see him on the sidelines. I saw this on on, on Sports Center, and somebody's like pulling, like popping his finger back into place, uh. and you see him like wincing and screaming in pain, and then he just runs back out there. Leads him down for the game-winning drive. And I thought, all right, all right. He might not be the best quarterback I've ever seen play at Notre Dame, but he's got some toughness to he's, him. He's one tough son of a bitch, isn't he? That, that's, yeah, <laughs> that, that endeared him to be A, all the flaws endears you to me because I'm a very flawed person, and, and I appreciate flaws in people, people who are just too good. Nah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see any fun in that, except for my Lord and Savior, Tom Brady. That's different. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, he's. Uh, I, I thought. I thought that was interesting. I thought that was strange. I would like. This is the only thing I don't like that I missed. I would like to know why he got pulled. Why he got benched? Was it a benching? Was it equipment thing? What What happened? And he was at the guy texting me was at the game, so he's not listening to a radio announcer or a television guy. Yeah, tell you the thing. I didn't listen. So uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, the only knows? thing I'm trying to figure out why he missed a series in the middle of the. I think it was, it was the late first quarter, middle of the second quarter. Ghost Dog answered me. He said, uh, Georgia game was reduced to, or was uh, scheduled on ESPN, then bounced it to the ESPN app before going back to ESPN 2. So he oh, said so that they that's had, why the yeah. streaming problems happened? Yeah, apparently that, that was the issue there. So so Notre Dame, you know, squeaks out the win. We, we don't know how good they are. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.